<laughs> Jeff Williams here. We got Jeff Williams that car. In this video, I'm going to show you how to metal detect using a VLF machine in some of these creek beds where the bedrock is, because that's where some of the best gold is. All that and a whole lot more coming up. Excellent. Now this is bedrock, and what it is is exposed up through the wash here where the water's come down, washed over it. You see how rough and angular that is? This is a perfect catch for gold. So what you're going to do, VLFs are great for finding gold right up here on the bedrock. You can use pulse induction, but I like using VLFs. You're going to go over this area, and you're going to scout every little nook and cranny. Clean it out. Move rocks if you have to. Don't be lazy about it, boy, and sit there and go, oh, there's nothing there. Gonna get in there and you're gonna work it. Work it good. And I'm gonna show you something else. Come here, look at this. All right, now, this is bedrock right here. This is quartzite. It used to be sandstone, but it's been metamorphosed into a metamorphic rock like that. That's quartzite. And you be careful chipping at this because it's like glass, it'll get on you. What you're looking for is patches of bedrock that look like this. This has been worked over by somebody else. They come in here, they cleaned it all off, and they backpacked it. Now, what does this mean to you? Well, first of all, you need to come in here with a VLF, very low frequency. I'm going to go over this bedrock and see if they missed anything. I'm not sure if they did. It's always good to go over other people's workings because you don't know how efficient they were. So that's what we're going to do today. So you know what I'm going to say, boy. You better. So come on. Let's go. All right. Now to set this monker up, you're going to have your sensitivity all the way to the right. <laughs> Volume all the way to the right. These are your two ground balancing knobs. You got your mineralization and your iron discrimination. I usually keep them in the middle. On the back is your threshold button right there. See that? First thing you need to do, son, is ground balance. I like to ground balance mine a little hot. What does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. As the detector's going down, it should sound off just a little, not a lot. Now, when I do my adjustments, I'm adjusting this big knob, increments of one. The little knob, clicking, increments of 10. I'm not that far off, so I'll do increments of one. I'm rolling it with my thumb as I'm pumping the coil. That's about ground balance. Hear that? It's stable, going up and down as I pump it. Now I turn the threshold up so you can hear it. Now I'm going to ground balance a little hot. See how it sounds off just a little as I'm going down? That's ground balancing hot. And now you're good to go. One more thing I gotta stress. Coil covers. Yeah, I know I ain't got one today. Forgot it. Good boots, especially up in this brush line. Boy, there's snakes like you wouldn't have never seen before. And of course, you gotta have a good spoon to dig up the material and a good digging tool too. Make sure you got a rare earth magnet on the end. You see that? Because that's gonna pick up the little pieces of metal that drive you crazy when you're out here in the old gold fields because there's tons of it out here. The metal starts to rust and break down and your, your VLF is going to pick it up. It's going to drive you crazy. So you bring one of these mockers out here. I got this to chip at the bedrock and I got this to dig in the soil. If I hear a target running around, pull out any boot tacks or, or broken down pieces of tin can with this monker. But be careful. <laughs> It, they got a strong pull. I'm using a rare earth neodymium on that, son. Huh. So you know what I'm going to say, huh? Ooh. No, so come on, let's go. You're going to systematically grid this section out. Your bedrock. You're going to go over every little square piece. I don't want to see you doing one of these. You ain't going to find nothing doing that. You got to get that coil to the soil, or in this case, you got to get the coil on the bedrock. You're going to move it back and forth really fast. Don't go slow. VLFs don't like that. Get it down in there. It might sound off when you bump the coil, but don't you fret none about that. Get down in these little pockets where the gold likes to sit. And you're going to go over every nook and cranny that you can find. You got something there. 
And trust me, you're gonna find tons of hot rocks. I got one there. All right, we'll start with this one. Where'd you go? All right, and then you're gonna do a crisscross pattern. Okay, I can repeat it both ways. All right. Oh, one more thing. Bring me pads, because this bedrock will turn it into mince meat. Now, if you ain't got any knee pads, extra spoons work just good, son. Now, I got these spoons from Gary Bass. I'll leave a link down below. He does custom paint work on spoons and classify anything you can imagine. Ever have one of those days where you're metal detecting, you find a target, get excited, only to find out that your spoon is missing? Ooh, I wish I had a spoon I could see. Maybe something that's custom painted to my desire. Ah! Introducing custom spoons by TommyKnockers.gold. Wow, look at these spoons. Ooh, I can find these anywhere. Ooh, and even for the ladies too. <laughs> Ooh, come to Papa, baby, yeah! At a piece of metal, come! Thanks, Gary! Uh, oh, yeah, that's better. <laughs> now, I'm gonna use my magnet first. Because if it's a boot tech, I'm not going to be sitting all day digging. Alright. That looks pretty clean. Alright. Be careful when you bump these, they'll sometimes sound off. And make sure your cable's tied. If it's loose, it can give you a false signal. Now come here, I'm going to show you a little trick. Come down here, boy. I want to show you something real good like. All right, now, when you're down on bedrock like this, and you, you got a target somewhere in here, and you think, Jeff, how, to, how the heck you gonna get it out of there? Don't you worry, son. I'm gonna use physics to do that for me. All right, now, gold is what? 19.3 times heavier than water. It's, it's really dense material. If there's any gold in here, it's gonna sit in the bottom. So what am I gonna do? Well, you can bring a straw or a plastic tube, but I didn't bring one today, so I'm just gonna use my face. So what I'm gonna do is I'll blow the dirt out of the way. And yeah, you're gonna get dusty. Then you go over it again. That's my finger. Watch your eyes with this quartzite. Right there, sonny boy. Right inside the crack of those rocks. You see it? You see it? Oh, man. You have to be a blind man not to see that. Little tiny piece. Look at that. Real tiny. Sitting right here in this little crack. That's why you gotta, you gotta break that bedrock up. That's a nice one. Go over it again. Make sure there's not another one. You hear that? Is that a little piece of gold? No. What is that? The heck? Ah, con! Ooh, I hate these 
these things. These are called hot rocks, son. You see that? Don't look like much, does it? Mm. <laughs> Hear that? Sounds just like a nugget. You're gonna find thousands of these. Ooh, I hate that. Now I'm gonna go over this entire area with a fine tooth comb. Cause if you find one, chances are you'll find more. And I'm gonna work my way all the way up to the top of this thing. Like a giant sluice box. The little gold's at the end, big gold's at the top. Come on, I got gold to find, son. See, I yeah, my knees. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? Where's my knee pads? No, so come on, let's go. <laughs> See what I mean? Pieces of can, you're gonna find that everywhere in gold mining districts. And don't throw it back on the ground either, you hear me boy? You put it in your trash pouch because some other fool's gonna come up and think they got a nugget and spend all day digging this out. Wasting time. You pick your trash up and other trash. Another one. Come on. What I'm doing is, is I know there's bedrock down here, right there. And you can see where all this huge amount of water that's washed down has brought in all this, this fluff and this, this organic material. So what I'm doing is I brought my shovel and I'm trying to, I'm trying to scrape up some bedrock. And so what I'm gonna do is get my VLF set up and go over this bedrock. It's actually quartzite that's decomposing. And when bedrock decomposes, they call it what? Saprolite. And in some scenarios, it's laterite. That's a good one right there. Now don't get all excited. There's a lot of trash in this wash. I found about 10,000 pounds of iron, I can make myself a Buick. All right, remember what I told you. Use this guy. Ah. Yeah, see I got a little piece of iron right there, you see that? All right, let's go over it again. Sounds pretty loud. <sighs> yeah, I know. Now it's right on top of this big rock. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's a piece of metal. <sighs> yeah, I know, I know. I just got a glint of it in the sun, you see it? Right there. See where the gravels will turn red? Right there, sunny boy, you like that? Oh, look at that, look at that. <laughs> Who's crazy now, sunny boy? Oh yeah, this is what it's all about. That's real nice. Right there, see where that soil's turning red? Right in there, that's where all that bedrock is decomposing. I told you, but you wouldn't listen, would you? They said I was crazy, who's crazy now? Oh, that's nice, oh, that's real nice. All right, well, I'm gonna keep digging this out then, because if there's one, there's more. And that's what you should do too. Remember, go upstream as far as you can. If the gold disappears, come back down. Look for side tributaries. And of course, you're gonna focus on where the gold is trying to concentrate in pockets and waterfalls. All right, well, I'm gonna get on out of here because I got gold to find now. And ooh, I gotta get every speck. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams. 
and the little nugget that could. Saying, you want to find nuggets, but you don't know what to do? Dig in the bedrock, boy, and you'll find tons of AU. Yeah! Guess where I'm at? Well, I ain't gonna tell you that's where I'm at. All right, I'm over here at the working face. And you can see there's somebody coming here and they've already done their reports and you can see they got the information marked on the face. You can see the vein material they're following. It's got dip to it, I'd say maybe a 60 degree dip. It's got a strike of north west from where I'm sitting, but I don't have my compass with me. Now this right here, this material is running about half ounce per ton. If you're lucky, you can get an ounce per ton out of here. You can get some stringers in here. Hopefully these look like they're kind of small, but they might swell. So this is the kind of stuff you're looking for. You can see bands of quartzite running through here. Of course, I'm not interested in the quartzite. I'm interested in this zone right here. So what do you do? Well, you come in here and you blast out your foot wall first. You leave your hanging wall with your vein in it. Then you come in here and you put four, maybe five charges in behind it and you blast out that onto a muck sheet. You want to collect that stuff because this is your ore and then it'll leave your hanging wall behind. Now that's why a lot of your mines you're going to see the hanging walls left behind is because I usually blast out the foot wall. That's not always the case but that's usually how they do it. And that way they can just peel the vein away. That's why you see some of these smooth surfaces. There's actually fissure field veins. Remember I told you there's 12 different models of deposition. But right here we have a small vein structure and it's running in between the quartzite and of course when we blast this away you're gonna see this nice smooth zone in there. It almost looks like a shear zone. All right what I got in here let me get you on in there because I know you guys like close-ups. So I've got a bug right in there and I got sulfides in there. Got arsenopyrite running through there. It was the last round to go off. And I got some more bugs up in there, you see that? So I got these nice little stringers right here. And these are fairly rich with arsenopyrite, but you gotta roast them. Now, a lot of people ask me about roasting. I, I like to roast between four to 600, but uh, some people add silica to their sulfides to keep them from sticking to the cast iron. Uh, you roast for about 30 to 45 minutes. Your material is gonna turn to a deep earthy brown, red, or black. And that's when you know you're done. You dump it in water, fracture it, and then you can use gravity separation like a sluice box or something to get it out or gold pan it. Look at that cotton candy growing up in there, boys and girls. Ooh, now you know what me and Slim eat when we come down to the mines. Yeah, no hard tack and beans for me. I got all the cotton candy I need. Look at all this track in here. I feel right at home. And then to wash it down, I got some condensation on the walls up there on the back. See that? Yeah, I just run my tongue along the top of it. Mmm. It's like mama used to make. All right, I got myself a chute right here. Now you can see where the ore cart would come over here and they'd stop. Sometimes they'll put some type of a beam here to help stop the ore cart. Then they'll take the lock off the back. Then they'll, they'll tilt it to the, they'll rotate it to the side because they always rotate. You can do 360 with those things. Tilt and dump it. It'll go down there. Usually they'll have a gate on it. That one don't have a gate. And then the skip car will be waiting down below. And they fill up that skip car, take it up up the skip car and then take it out to the, uh, the hopper or the ore bin. Now you see all these stoles. The stoles are those timbers holding up the back. See that? It looks like some of those are rough cut wood. Maybe some uh, original juniper from the surrounding hills. But you got, you got some stoles all the way up there. That, that whole area has been stoked out. Now you just look at the size of that stoke. You barely get a man in there to lay on his side. You imagine them up there drilling, picking, blowing rounds. Look at that, all the way up in there, chasing that seam right there. Yeah, you want to know what work is. You be a hard rock miner, and that'll tell you what work is. And then, of course, this is where the skip runs right here. All right, this is where the skip would run, right there. You see that? Oh, and look at this. See these? This is when the skip goes around corners. 
and then the cable would run on these. And there's another one right there. See that? And there's another one right there. Oh, let's take a look at that one. See where the cable's been burning into this thing? And look at that. There's a tally board. How many skips of ore came up through here? They would bring it out of here. Look at that. And there's the top of the stope right there we were just looking up. Oh, but man, this rock is soft. That's because it's saturated. Now these are columns here that were left behind. And it's obvious why they left them here for structural support. And you'll see these in mines a lot. Sometimes they're a lot bigger than this. Now, it's obvious that the band of mineralization is right here. But you can also see, what? How soft it is. See how soft that is? I can practically pull it out with my finger. Manganese oxide in the mix, and you're gonna see that a lot in the USGS reports. Oh, look at all those stalls. Stopes go all the way to the surface. You got open stopes. And you can see the drift here. And what they would do is they would get up underneath these seams and they would drill and blast. They'd create these huge funnel-like ore bins. And then when they blasted the rock out, it would collect in the ore bins and they'd let gravity do all the work. There's the tracks for the skip. Right there. There's the head frame right there with the ore bin. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You call down the thunder, you got it, boy. See that? That's the today's Pony Express box. And it's filled with gold and silver. Run, you up there. Run and tell the other Trivia patrons that the treasure hunt is coming. You tell them I'm coming. And the treasure's coming with me, you hear? The treasure's coming with me.